These are six mistakes to look out for when studying for anatomy. So number one is gonna be seeking out only memorizing and passive learning study methods. Don't keep rereading the book. This is one of the biggest mistakes when it comes to higher education because we're kind of force fed this from K through 12. Just keep rereading, exposing yourself again and again, but it's not very efficient and it's not very effective. You're gonna spend a lot of time and not learn that much. Instead, you need to get a little bit more actively involved with the content. So how do you do that? One of my favorite techniques back when I was studying anatomy in medical school was actually the Feynman technique. I didn't know it was called that at the time, but me and my friends, we would take turns going up to the whiteboard in an unused classroom after hours, and we would just start drawing out all the branches of the external carotid, for example and we would quiz each other in the process and it makes it very actively involved. You can also learn from one another. So each person is gonna have their own mnemonics and memory tricks and some of them will stick for you better than the ones that you created yourself. Another underutilized trick is to actually appreciate the significance of the anatomy you're learning. So when you understand the disease process it relates to, it's much easier to actually learn the anatomy because you're tying it to other concepts. It's no longer just a fact in isolation, but you're creating this network, this map, of connected facts. This is incredibly relevant to surgical specialties as an example, but it's still relevant to even non-surgical specialties, things like internal medicine, maybe less so for psychiatry, but in radiology, in internal medicine, in cardiology, gastroenterology, in a lot of specialties, even beyond surgery, very applicable. So for example, consider how the biliary tree works. This is how the liver and gallbladder actually secrete bile into the intestinal lumen. So let's say an attending tells you that the patient has a bile stone in their cystic duct, then your differential diagnosis will be slightly different than if their gallstone was in the common bile duct. In the first case, the stone is only blocking the gallbladder, but in the second case, the stone is causing a backup of bile in both the liver and the gallbladder. And as expected, the patient is gonna present with different symptoms and you're gonna have different clinical findings on your physical exam. Even if you don't know these things cold, by having a general understanding of the anatomy and a general understanding of the disease process, you can reason your way through to the correct answer and that actually is fun and rewarding in its own way. Number two, being afraid of the cadaver lab. I know dissecting a human cadaver can be really intimidating, really off-putting, but in med school, everyone gets through it. Sure, some people are gonna faint early on and sometimes even a couple months in, but everyone's gonna get through it. Everyone learns to deal with it. And it's an adjustment curve, some steeper than for others. Understand that being able to learn and dissect from a human cadaver is a a tremendous privilege because that person, they donated their body for science and for medical education. So you will overcome that initial shock. Just give it time, ease into it. And generally, they're gonna cover the entire head for the first few weeks or first months, and you'll be dissecting other parts of the body because understandably so, seeing the head and the face is gonna be most jarring. And also because of the formaldehyde and sometimes the actual disease processes of that individual, you also may be overwhelmed by some of the smells, so wearing a mask can be helpful as well. When you're in cadaver lab, I also recommend you look at multiple bodies, not just the one you're assigned to. The reason being, there's a tremendous amount of anatomical variation in the human body. For example, roughly 15% of the human population doesn't have a palmaris longus muscle in their forearm. And that's important to note because come anatomy practical day, you don't know which body or which anatomical variation they're gonna be testing you on. Number three is only studying alone. This goes back to the Feynman technique, teaching others, not just learning from the teacher, but also teaching your friends. And part of the reason this is so beneficial is that it's much more of an active process. Rather than being told and receiving the information, and uh, recognizing and saying, yes, I recognize that. Yes, that makes sense. You're now on the other side and you have to recall that information from scratch, not recognize, but recall now a much more active process. And now you are teaching someone else and you are synthesizing. If you can actually teach someone else a concept, that's how you know you truly understand it. As I mentioned before, drawing on a whiteboard is gonna be very beneficial, but you can also go into the cadaver lab and then quiz each other on various items that you could be tested on on the anatomy practical because Generally speaking, the anatomy practical is gonna be tagging actual physical structures on the cadaver and not giving you a perfect image or a perfect uh, diagram and then asking you what each thing is. You're gonna be looking at the actual human body. If you have the opportunity to volunteer as let's say a teaching assistant as I did in my final year of medical school, this is gonna be tremendously helpful because you will be conducting the pro sections, meaning you'll be the teacher dissecting your own uh, cadaver that you show the students before they dissect their own. And you'll also be teaching and addressing questions. This is such a powerful way to reinforce and learn, especially if you're going into something that is surgical. So most of the med students who are going into surgical subspecialties, whether it was ortho, plastics, neurosurgery, et cetera, most of them volunteered to be TAs in that final year. And they would choose the days to come in that were relevant to their specialty. So yeah, I wasn't going in for like 
the colon as an example, but anytime it was the forearm or the muscles in the abdomen or the chest, then of course I was there to help with the procession because it was very relevant to my future career in plastic surgery. Number four is poor quality resources. Quality is super important and when it comes to anatomy, you can actually find some inconsistency and some resources that have incorrect information. In fact, I remember getting pimped on an away rotation about the extensor tendons in the hand. So one of the apps I used had the extensor indices radial to the extensor digitorum. Radial meaning that it's closer to your thumb. Your radius is here, your ulna is here, so radial this way, ulnar this way. But that's not true. In real life, the extensor indices is ulnar to the extensor digitorum. So for most people, that is a tiny detail that does not matter, but if you're going into plastic surgery and you wanna do hand surgery specifically, then yes, that is relevant. So in this instance, I had mastered the material, but the material I used was wrong, so I was led astray. So when it comes to resources, first of all, focus on accuracy, and secondly, focus on viewing the information in multiple ways and getting that clinical significance. You don't wanna look at just a textbook or just do flashcards, use multiple modes. And that brings us to our sponsor of today's video, KenHub. KenHub is a single comprehensive resource that you can use to learn anatomy. It's great in that it takes the guesswork out of how to approach it. So if the more scattered approach to anatomy is confusing and overwhelming, jumping from resource to resource, then this tool offers a single streamlined solution. Along with engaging videos, quizzes, and question banks, KenHub now offers a custom quiz feature that allows you to create your own quiz to tailor the learning experience to your specific needs and goals. And it's tough to beat the KenHub Atlas, which is a pocket-sized anatomy companion filled with beautiful imagery, rich explanations, diverse anatomical body types, summary tables and cheat sheets, and a color-coded legend. It's an excellent resource for pre-meds and medical students, especially if you're in your first two years. And for a limited time, get 10% off using the link in the description below. Number five is not immersing yourself. And as I said before, textbooks, flashcards alone, they're just not gonna cut it. And sometimes the messy form of studying can be a bit overwhelming for some people. But if you're jumping between your 3D anatomy app and your flashcards and cadaver lab, you're gonna have a much better, much more robust understanding of anatomy. Doing plenty of practice questions as well will be highly beneficial. So this is a bit of a ridiculous question, but there's a pretty well-known MSK practice question about a patient who got stabbed between the first and second second toes. And the question is something along the lines of which dermatome falls into that region? Well, very oddly, it's the deep fibular or deep perineal nerve. And if you do enough questions, you're going to learn these things so much easier because if I just told you that fact in isolation, you probably wouldn't remember it. But if you now think about a patient getting stabbed right there, now you're gonna remember it much more effectively. And number six is poor anatomy test taking. And there's two things here. The first is that you need to orient yourself carefully before beginning the question. So let's say on your practical exam, the cadaver's in front of you, you have about a minute to figure out what the tag structure is and then answer whatever question there is about that structure. And before you just jump to saying what it is, first orient yourself, zoom out, look around, what are the surrounding structures so you can be certain of what the tag structure actually is. For example, is the body flipped over? Is the forearm supinated or pronated? Is the head in the same or opposite direction as the previous question you just answered? If you don't orient yourself, you're gonna lose so many points from just these silly mistakes where they caught you off guard. The second thing is to read each answer choice very, very carefully. There is a difference between the ilium, or the topmost hip bone, and the ilium, the distal part of the small intestine. Sometimes the test maker will try to trick you in these ways. Yes, anatomy is messy. Yes, it's totally different than anything else you're gonna be studying, but embrace yourself by just jumping in on the deep end. Quiz yourself, study with friends, try those 3D anatomy apps and use the great tools offered by Ken Hub. Good luck and stay tuned for our step-by-step -step guide on how to study anatomy, which is coming out on the Med School Insiders channel later this summer.